My name is Vahid Chitsas, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this afternoon. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Well, thank you very much for having me, Vahid. I'm tuning in from London, UK. It is 8.40 p.m. and there's no sunshine here, let me tell you today. Um, my name is Action Amanda and I teach children how to be healthy and active through my funtivity concept, which is dancing, singing, having lots of fun, but educating children to be active for life, for a fitter future. Listen, my daughter is active already. I don't want her to see you. I, I don't know. <laughs> I've, been, I've been looking at pictures of your daughter. She is adorable. And what I love about you, Vahid, you are such a family man. And, and it's so lovely to see. Thank you. Yeah, she's, she's one active, crazy girl. <laughs> I can see. And that, that definitely doesn't come from my side. That's my wife's side. I'm, I'm throwing the responsibilities at them. That's how it should be, right? It's crazy. So what does that mean that you want to... So is there an age range that you think that gets ingrained in them? Yeah, I believe if you can get children active, I mean, from as early as age, I know it sounds very strange, but I teach both babies from age four months up to four years. And I make my own very funky nursery rhyme albums for children. And when you work with children, as soon as they hear music, they want to move. So I engage them with my modern nursery rhymes, lots of props, spider balls, pom-poms, dreamers. So the concept is all about using interesting props in a physical and a fun way, linking the props to a song, and then linking everything to the earliest foundation stage, which is the curriculum that we teach here in the UK. So it's educating them in a fun environment. That is crazy. So here is, here is a, a, a crazy observation that we had with our daughter. So one day we're playing, uh, this is when she was like five, six months old and everything else. She was sitting on the, on the, on the, on the Persian rug that we got. <laughs> and she's got this little toy, which it plays different songs. We couldn't figure out, my wife couldn't figure out why sometimes she cries. So we found out that one of the songs that we play, I think it's called Old MacDonald or whatever it's called. <laughs> and she would like go hysterical and she would cry like crazy. So now when she watches the, the, the cartoons on TV, if that song comes, she'll be looking at it for like maybe three or four seconds and then she literally will go crying. <laughs> so we're like wondering how the hell did she correlate this song with crying? In it? We, don't, we don't know. We have no idea what has happened, but it couldn't have happened in her past because she's only five, six months. Like, it doesn't make sense how she could. Now she's about 16, 17 months old. It's delayed. So when she sees it, it's delayed, but it's becoming more okay. But then me and my wife were looking at each other. We're like, what do we do that she correlates this song with crying and not being happy? It was the craziest thing. And we saw it ourselves because, I mean, it's a, it's a newborn. We can't say the newborn <laughs> has a historical vision where something <laughs> happened or somebody abused you when you were young. She is young, you know, and she was having that. So I could definitely see how that could work for the future. But it's a bit like me. I have a dinosaur song and the children have to use their imagination. But the music is quite deep and dark so some children absolutely love it but other people say other children say too scary too scary action amanda <laughs> music has an effect on all different children in many ways yeah that is crazy so here's my question talk about us about, about your book a little bit and then i got a few other questions to see how we can so do adults need to act like kids once in a while I believe whenever you're working with children, you need to lose your inhibitions because if, it's a bit like if you don't dance, they're not going to. So my motto is children move better when adults move with them. So, yes, it, it's all about, you know, just just not playing the fool. But if, if you are active, you, we are the role models for our children. And I think, you know, that's that's the best start as, as an adult that. If we can be active, then hopefully they'll, they'll, they'll want to carry on throughout their, their life. Yeah. So really here's important. my question. How do we make sure 
that the next generation, I'm talking about young children, it's okay to have a superhero and a role model based on movies and everything else. But my question is, as parents, what role do we play in so that in the future, we are the role models for our children instead of being a superhero that is totally out of this world, right? Being there, like that's one of my, that's one of my questions for myself is like, is it Superman or is it daddy? <laughs> is it the Superwoman or is it the mom? Like I'm all, is it the Spider-Man or is it daddy? Like I'm always thinking about that. Like what are the steps necessary to take so they have the role model, they have their parents as a role model versus arbitrary superheroes that we created? Or well, is that, that okay in your professional opinion? Yeah, well, that's really interesting. So I have a 15-year-old daughter, and it, it was always my mission. There's three values that, that you know, I, I wanted to instill, is that she was healthy, she was active, and that she's kind, or oh, actually for and educated. So when she was younger and I was cooking, say, let's um, a wok, a fresh stir fry, I would sit her on the counter with me and get her to taste the fresh ingredients and help me along the way cooking. She would see me going to the gym. So I think if, if we behave in a, in a way so we are a good role model, our children will want to copy us. And it's funny you say about the superhero because I've just animated myself as a character for a kids TV series. I've just, um, just got a 20 grand investment to turn me as Action Amanda into a little superhero girl. Because think about it, Vahid, there aren't any. You name me uh, some, some superheroes that you remember. And, and what is there now? Women, role models. Exactly. And that was that, that's my fear where, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I always wonder if they ask them in school, like, who do you want to become or what's your plan in the future? <laughs> I think one of the most craziest thing would be if they say, I want to be a Superman or Spider-Man or something like that. Then I'm like, as parents, we need to do, I mean, what the, the question is this, if the parents take the responsibility on their shoulders and is no joke, this is a hard work. This is day in, day out. This is not one of those things that you could leave it to chances, right? So it's a lot of work. My question is, is the result justification for parents putting this much work into it? Or do we just say, you know what? Superman and Spider-Man is it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, it's always good to have these superheroes as role models, but there's a seriousness behind it. But if you, if you make these things sound fun, it's a bit like my character, Action Amanda, is going to encourage children to eat their fruit and their vegetables. But not only that, she's going to teach them to be kind. And there's going to be all different situations and problems to solve. But the magic bag will always have the solution. So um, it, it, it's about, you know, making the situation fun so that the children don't realize that they're learning. But no, I, I mean, I, I love all of the superheroes. They're never going to go away. So we might as well use them anyway. <laughs> now, you said education. That's a big, that's a very, very sensitive topic for me. Did you mean the traditional education or did you mean education in different sense? Yeah. You said I want my daughter to be educated. Yeah, so I'm, I'm educating children in a fun way. So it's physical development. And that is a way of talking about how we move our bodies, coordination, balance. So I'm talking education from a preschool age. And I, I, be, I, I believe that, again, if we're teaching them how to be healthy and active, um, but they're also learning. So I say learning through play, the action Amanda way. So it's education, but very, very, very basic. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've seen that so many parents, I've seen so many unhappy doctors. I've seen so many unhappy, very well educated individuals that maybe they would have gone into playing guitar playing the piano, being a soccer player, being all of this stuff, 
but they got stuck doing the academic way yeah. because that was what their parents uh, required them or obligated them to do. So now when they get older, it's this one resentment uh, kind of environment where they're like, if you were not forced me to do this, I could have done this and my life could have been different. Now, that's a big if. They could have been a, a bad soccer player. They could have been a bad yeah. piano player. Like, you know, all that stuff. But that's where I feel like sometimes it's, it's a little bit important for families and individuals to really dive into and see if that is what they want their kids to do. So I think as parents, so here's my, 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 my question for you. Are there any good books that actually teach you how to become a good parent? Or is that a very subjective subject? <laughs> yeah, there, there are lots of books to, to how to be a good parent. It's, it's whether you choose to read them. And I, you know, I, as a parent, my daughter was very, very shy. And of course, I wanted her to go to all these after school activities. But I would never push her into doing anything. And actually now she wants to become an editor. She's very much into photography. And, you know, she, she just loves everything about, about film. And I, I, I haven't pushed her. That's the way that she's wanted to go. So I truly believe just let children be children and, and, and they will find their own pathway for the future. Even and though you, you may not agree. <laughs> well, well, I'm very entrepreneurial and I just love all things business. And she's watched her mother in, in, in all different business situations. And I said, well, you know, what, what would you like to be when you go, oh, mum, I don't want to be, I don't want any part of what you do. <laughs> so she's definitely not going to follow my footsteps. But, you know, I, I would encourage her to do the best that she, she wants to do. Awesome. So talk about your, 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 your book a little bit. Yeah, so this is my book that I've recently written a chapter in. And my business mentor is called Sammy Blindell. And this is a book called The Law of Brand Attraction. And it's about 24 um, inspired business owners from the Brand Builders Club. We shared our most successful brand attraction strategies. And as we all know, a lot of businesses have had to pivot during lockdown. And I teach children usually physically. And I've, you know within a week had to become a media consultant a lighting expert had to learn you know everything technology and this is not a technology person <laughs> but um, it's about my story whereas I entertained two children in Lisbon online and we were being resourceful without resources I was asking the families to go and find a broom for limbo dancing but it was just the most unbelievable atmosphere that I created and I was thinking hold on a minute, everybody knows me in North West and South London, but now I can reach a global audience. So my chapter is actually called Going Global from My Living Room. And then looking back at my life, I was actually healthier, wealthier as a one woman band. And, you know, I went all around the world working with the celebrities, trying to franchise in Dubai and, and, and different places around the world. But I'm, I'm, I've got no stress. I can reach the world now through the internet, through my Zoom classes. I, I, and, and it's about thinking of outside the box. I'm now offering virtual play dates and we're Zooming into nurseries. And there's obviously some children that aren't going back to nurseries, but we invite those who are staying at home. And I've called this concept all joining together. So it's about, you know, thinking outside the box, but there's 24 other entrepreneurs. Bob Doyle from The Secret wrote the foreword and Marie Diamond was, was also writing a chapter, a real chapter in the book. And um, it, it was just a real honor for me to be asked to go in this book. And my business mentor, Sammy Blindell, she just had an idea of helping other business owners um, how to pivot their business. And she, we literally wrote this in eight days and published. So thanks to the amazing Andrew Priestley who helped us publish the book. Um, we're hoping to help other business owners because it will become a, a business encyclopedia because there's something to learn from all our chapters. They're so different. I love it. How do people find you? People can find me through my website, amandasactionclub.co.uk or Action Amanda, as we can now see on 
Instagram and Amanda Frolic on Twitter. And for me, it's, I think, you know, success is not about how much money you make. It's about the lives that you change. And if I could be known all around the world, maybe Amanda's Action Club concerts, whereas I can have thousands of people on my Zoom. In the UK, we, we, you have Mr. Motivator for the adults. You've got Joe Wicks for the school children. But I really think there's a market for Action Amanda to be the celebrity for the tots. Um, I, I just want to encourage these children to be healthier from an early age. And I'm definitely on a mission to do that. So watch this space. And Action Amanda, my animation TV series, hopefully, touch wood, we're going to pitch to some um, amazing production companies. And then everyone around the world can be a little superhero like her. I love it. Love it. More power to you. Listen, I want to thank you so much for taking this afternoon out of your busy schedule and being with us. More power to you. Keep up the good work and definitely stay safe. We'll speak very, very soon. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be with you tonight. You got it. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.